is five now, the second Monday in June. Rulings from the U.S. Supreme Court, key among them a case out of Ohio. At issue, the method for removing ineligible voters from Ohio's voter rolls. The argument against it was that the method was unfair and that it violates the National Voter Registration Act. However, in a 5-4 ruling, the court rejected that argument, saying that it does not violate the failure to vote clause or any other part of the National Voter Registration Act. A setback to voting rights proponents who say the practice disenfranchises thousands of registered voters. Joining me now on the Daily Ledger, page 5 beat, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Nussbaum. Barry, voter rights people have not been dealt a blow here. It's the Democrat machine that's been dealt a blow because they want voter fraud. This is how they win elections, through multiple people registered in, in multiple venues. They want the systemic voter fraud in our system. And the framers of the Constitution would applaud the Buckeye State for trying to clean up the voter rolls. It makes me sad, Graham, that for some reason you need an identification and proof of who you are to do so many important things in this country. We can name dozens, from driving a car, to buying a house, to getting your welfare check. But the one thing that we open the door to massive fraud from people that are alive and dead, real and imagined, is voting, the most important right you have in this country. And you're pointing out the problem. There are more people who can vote then there are people. How is that even logically possible? And why, why isn't everybody really upset about the fact that dead people are voting in every electoral uh, location across the country? Ohio is bending over backwards to let people stay on the rolls. And yet somehow, if you don't vote and you don't answer your mail and you don't re-register, that discriminates against minorities? I don't think so. How else neither does in court. Right. How else are you going to do it? You got to have some sort of system. They're giving the people a chance to say, "Hey, no, I'm here. Uh, don't take <laughs> me off the rolls." But obviously, if they're not around uh, or they're not cognizant enough to to answer their mail, then they're removed. Okay. So we step back and we look at the big picture. This is a, a victory for the Constitution, I, I would say, a conservative victory, uh, if you will. You couple it with the Baker victory of last week in the court. Clearly, even with Anthony Kennedy still on the bench, uh, has, has delivered a couple of mostly conservative uh, rulings, but we're still waiting on the gerrymandering case that's gonna be delivered, the, the decision delivered by the Supreme Court. There's another one that the framers of the Constitution want the states to handle. And I would almost argue, Barry, you have a law background, but I would almost argue that the Supreme Court has no role in, in this decision-making process whatsoever. I am a very strong states rights advocate going all the way back to the framers writings at the time they put together our sacred constitution, which is push rights back to the states and away from the federal government except in certain issues. If a state wants to do it this way or that way, they ought to have that right. That's the way it was intended to be in 1776. And somehow things have gotten away from us over the last several hundred years. Yeah, and, and I would argue again that uh, the United States Supreme Court, uh, per the United States Constitution, that the third branch of government really has no role in any of these, whether it's gerrymandering or cleaning up the voter rolls. It's states' rights, as, as you clearly pointed out. Barry, thanks.